Hi, Kevin Green here. Welcome to Pathways to the Past. I'm sitting outside uh, my house here on Calvin Boulevard starting this video. And uh, whenever the subject of Calvin Boulevard comes up, there's a couple of questions that usually come up. Calvin has this center divider down the middle of the street for the first two blocks. And those two questions that usually come up, uh, one is why does Calvin Boulevard have the center divider down it? And uh, the other question is why doesn't the third block have the center divider down the middle of it? Or as far as that goes, why don't the other boulevards in this part of town have the center divider? And uh, my other videos are based on facts that I tell you that I find out about the subject at hand. Uh, this one, I found some facts that don't directly tell the answers to these questions. But I've done some speculating based on the facts and came up with uh, some theories on it. And I'd like to share those with you and see what you think. So I think I'll go back inside because it's a little bit chilly out here, a little breezy, and talk, talk about those. I've decided to come to you from my front porch since it's not too bad out here and the sun's shining. We'll see how it goes. but. Let's start this uh, video by a brief review of the history of Calvin Boulevard. Of course, like most of Seymour, it started out as a Meadie Shills property. Um, in the 1870s, there's a fellow named Jacob Peter who purchased um, most of the all of the land here that is now considered the Boulevard's area of Seymour. Uh, of course, his contribution was he sold the some of the properties to have the uh, Cyclone Driving Park horse racing track that I did a video on um, put in. Then in 18, around 1890, when he passed away, his son, John Herschel Peter, inherited the land. And he was a go-getter. He started developing it, uh, what was left of it, into um, residential properties. He started on the east end of the, of the property, which would have been the west edge of Seymour at the time. So in the time that he was alive, he developed from uh, Pine Street over to Elm Street, made it into residential lots and sold them for housing. Uh, he died in 18 or in 1904. He had a son and a daughter. His uh, son was named John J. Peter. And for whatever reason, John Herschel um, had not only the properties that he had left, but a lot of his other stocks and monies and stuff um, put into a, went into a trust fund at the Jackson County Loan and Trust Company, which today is known as the Jackson County Bank. So the his children did not inherit any of that. It was the bank's uh, ownership. So that started a lengthy legal battle between the son and daughter and the bank, which went on until 18, or in, until 1912, and they weren't able to get possession of the inheritance except for um, the old homestead house and barn that had been his parents' uh, property. That's the only thing that John Jay received from it. So in 1912, wanting to do some developing, he decided to um, Purchase about 25 acres of land that was yet to be under, yet to be developed. That was that did belong to his father, um, and he started developing it into what was became known as the Westover addition to the city of Seymour. And today, that's basically Calvin Boulevard, Emerson Drive, and Johnson Street. There were some other properties on the edges of of what he bought that were not being developed at this point. That uh, John Jay wanted to do this development, but he had a number of different business uh, opportunities going at the time. So he 
I don't think he really wanted to mess with the actual legwork of doing the development, so he brought on a business partner by the name of Calvin Dobbins. And Calvin, Calvin had been in the hotel business, but had given that all up and had started a real estate company in town. So he was familiar with the process of, of real estate selling and developing. And it was his job to decide um, the layout of the streets in the new addition and had the lots surveyed and put in place. Of course, put all the utilities in place. It was quite a job. Actually, it took several years to get all that done. So Calvin Boulevard then was named for Calvin Dobbins, but I'm actually not sure if it was named for himself or he had a son named Calvin, so it could have been his for his son or maybe just both of them, represented both of them. And uh, Emerson Drive was originally called John Street, and that was named for John Peter. And again, I don't know if it was for John Jay or whether it was for his father, John Herschel, or maybe again, both of them. Um, but about 1914 is when they started selling the lots on these properties and uh, developing it into housing. So that'll bring us to our first question of why does Calvin Boulevard have the center divider down the middle of it? Um, the articles in the paper early on when it was just being developed um, described it from the start as having uh, two separate driving lanes with a center, they called it a parkway in the paper down the middle and the wind is blowing the camera around there, sorry about that. Um, so being having the street named for himself or for his son, his son Calvin possibly could have just wanted this, the street since he was doing the planning and the, the survey work and stuff, maybe he just wanted um, the street that was named for him or his son to be a, a little nicer place or a little more attractive place maybe. So that's one possibility, but I think I found something maybe a little bit deeper than that here. So this is a copy of the um, plat map for the West Westover addition to City of Seymour. Plat book 4, page 25. So here we have 2nd Street and uh, Calvin Boulevard. You can see the center divider laid out on, in the plans. Now look, this is 3rd Street at the corner of 3rd and Calvin. It actually shows a little circle of grass right in the middle of the intersection. I don't know if that was ever put in or I think it probably was and was taken out later. And it's also kind of interesting come down to the end of Calvin Boulevard and look it shows 4th Street as having a center divider down the middle of it as well which is interesting. Now 4th Street would have been developed a little bit at a time as the city moved to the west so they could have done that if they wanted to but I'm sure they never did do it to 4th Street. But here's the interesting thing if you come to the west edge of Westover as second and Calvin, see this dashed line right behind these house lots? That's the old fence line to the Cyclone Driving Park. Running right down the middle, right behind the house properties. So the old Cyclone Driving Park um, and fairgrounds were put oh. in uh, in the 1880s and by 1912, 1914 when Calvin Boulevard was being developed. It wasn't being used much and it was in its last days of, of existence and I'm sure it was not in very good shape. It was reports in the paper if you, if you watched my video I did on the property. Uh, it said it was in deteriorating condition in the early 1900s. I'm sure the fence line was probably not particularly attractive as well. So I'm wondering if possibly they thought the need to do something to enhance the properties that were for sale in the first part of Calvin Boulevard there, and they thought maybe 
the center divider might make the properties more attractive to the buyers. Um, possible that's just a speculation of mine, but that's the thought that I had on why possibly they put them in, put the center divider down the middle of the street. So why did they not put a center divider down the last block of Calvin Boulevard to the north end? Uh, when they developed Calvin Boulevard, they started a second street and the first part that they did was the first two blocks of Calvin. So from second to fourth street was developed first. And then the, the last block from fourth street to fifth street was, was uh, developed. Uh, after most of the lots down in this area were were full. So the development started around 1914 and went to like a 1924-27 area and then I think it was in the 1928 newspapers talking about the grading of the streets down the third block. So um, if going by that you might think that since the, the Houses had sold, and plus the property at that point was being the the Cyclone Driving Park was being developed into the Stiegelmeyer addition. Plus the fact that the that property angled kind of northwest away from the third block, so maybe they didn't feel like they needed to have that block enhanced to, for selling purposes. But I came up with an incident that happened that maybe explains a, a better reason why they didn't. Go ahead and put more the center divider down the third block. This house here straight across from me um, was built in 1924 by Abraham Builders and then put up for sale. The family named the Thiel family purchased it as their home. They moved into it. On January the 22nd, 1927, the Thiel family noticed smoke in their house and uh, called the fire department. So the fire department shows up uh, to the front of the house in their nearly brand new La France uh, fire pumper to uh, put the fire out or to investigate anyway. Now at that time, let me put this around here. According to the 1924 Sanborn fire insurance map, there was actually a fire hydrant at that time right here between these, on the property line between these two houses over here. So that would be easy access to the hydrant to put the fire out. The problem is that with their new fire pumper, there was a, about a 10 foot section of pipe that was used to hook from the fire hydrant to the fire pumper and that tenth of section of pipe was stiff but would, was not flexible so the fire truck had to be positioned at just the right distance away from the fire hydrant in order to hook up to the water but with the center divider down the middle of the street and with it being a rainy day and very muddy in the middle they had no way of getting the fire truck positioned in the right place to hook up to the fire hydrant. So luckily the fire just, or the incident in the house just happened to be a short circuit in a wiring in the basement and it burned the wires in, in two and but there was not actually a fire. So everything was okay there. But the uh, Seymour fire chief who was named Charles Otto at the time, um, went to the safety board of Seymour um, with a, the thought that they needed to do something about it because this fire hydrant that they put in on this new street was completely useless for to them to use. So he, he suggested that the fire hydrants would probably have to be moved at that time. So there, there were actually fire hydrants at either end of the block like they are today but evidently at that point they removed the fire hydrant in the middle of the block. And I would guess that that probably was a, would be a good reason for not continuing to put the center divider down the 
the next block, which was just getting ready to be developed uh, the year after this incident happened. And on that note, I, when I first read this in the paper, I walked down to look at the fire hydrants at the um, either end of the block here. And let me show you what I found there. So I'm down here at the corner of 3rd and Calvin. This is the corner where I did the uh, Christmas morning video, if you saw it. And here's the fire hydrant on this corner. And notice that it's located just about as far back against the sidewalk away from the street as it can get. I have a feeling that it was relocated back that far um, for safety purposes after the incident. And uh, just to show you, we'll walk over to Emerson Drive and show you what the fire hydrant looks like over there. So this is 3rd and Emerson Drive, which would have been developed at the same time as uh, Calvin Boulevard. And you can see the fire hydrant here is out right next to the street, which is, seems to be the normal location for fire hydrants and all the other places in the area except for the two on Calvin Boulevard. And just to show you, I walked down here to 4th and Calvin, and this is the fire hydrant down here, which again is set back away from the street toward the sidewalk. As far as I can tell, these are the only two fire hydrants in the neighborhood that are like that. So that's my theory on why they only did the first two blocks of Calvin Boulevard with the center divider. And as far as the reason why the rest of the boulevards, uh, streets don't have the divider, if you've watched my uh, video on the Stiegelmeyer edition, you know that when they developed the other streets uh, to the west of here, that, that um, they were just interested in getting as many lots as they could sold or laid out and sold to bring the factory to town, the new factory to town. So that's it. Those are my my theories of on the center divider and Calvin um, and why I think it possibly are and are not, <laughs> I guess you could say. What do you think? Have any uh, ideas on your own? Um, at any rate, I'm glad that they, we have the center divider. I think it makes the street one of the more unique streets in town. And uh, one time when I first moved in over here, I was talking to one of the older uh, neighbors who lived here for many years, who unfortunately has passed away now, but they were saying at one point the city had approached them about removing the center divider and of course they had wanted nothing to do with that because of, it kind of makes the street unique I think. Makes parking a little tricky sometimes but makes it for a beautiful street. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw you might hit the subscribe button so you can be notified if you when I do more videos. Thanks. Bye.